wow, my face is really fucked up from allergies. I might as well be a dude. And then I'd be able to get away with having a shitty attitude. All right, my first video review of another author's book. I need to say another author because I found from experience, hard, bitter, cold experience, that uh, if you review other people's books, people tend not to see you as an author in your own right. I don't know why this is. I think because people tend to see reviewers as their own personal uh, publicist. Everybody wants to be the star and famous, and so you tend to eliminate other people in your mind as fast as you can so that you have as little competition in, in the confines of your own mind as possible. Never mind the fact that there are 7 billion people on the planet. So I found that uh, if I review other writers' books and I don't make it very clear from the beginning that I am also an author in my own right, they tend to think of me as, indeed, their own personal publicist. So I'm beginning with another author who has already reviewed my book. If you notice that uh, I'm wearing several or 40 different shades of lipstick and hairstyles during this video, this might be because, for reasons which I will go into in the video, unless I should forget, uh, I don't have any fucking time to do anything these days. Um, so I will be doing this in little snatches before and after my day job, partly because, well, one of the reasons views on YouTube instead of writtenly as a female, because everyone tells me, well, people like to look at girls. You get a lot more hits if you would doll yourself up and do it on YouTube. Of course, what they don't realize is putting on makeup and shit for a woman isn't... Yes, it can be used to manipulate people and um, get people to watch your shit, even if your shit sucks. But not doing that is sort of an affront to your dignity. I mean, imagine if I were just wearing my pajamas and shit and sitting here. Um, that wouldn't really work. In fact, it would do the opposite of working for me. So... Uh, I can't just roll out of bed and do this. I have to do it when I'm all dressed up to go to work. Because, well, life on this planet stinks. And that is, by and large, the theme of the excellent book that I'm going to review the next time I get five minutes. Dignity. What am I worried about dignity for? So Dignity is so 1994, but I don't remember it being a thing then either. Dignity is like 1922. So, Morristown by the Scottish journalist Kevin and no novelist Kevin McCallion. Um, it's about suicide, uh, but it's a very funny book about suicide because the premise is that, um, well, I don't know about the rest of the world, but People from Scotland who commit suicide wind up on one of several, maybe a dozen, stranded islands outside of Scotland serving a sort of purgatorial sentence until they figured out what went wrong with their lives and what went has gone, is continuing to go wrong with their afterlife. And uh, I don't recall Scotland still being Catholic, but it's a very Catholic concept of having fucked up. In life, but I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if a suicide is necessarily the worst kind of fuck up, but um, karma or there seems to be a deity involved in Morristown's world. Pardon me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's spelled M O R S T O U N. Um, there seems to be some sort of god involved in Morristown's world, but nobody meets him. He's kind of a peripheral character or force. Anyway, it's a very it's a very funny premise, and it's a very charmingly written book about the sort of Scottish misfits who wind up in a place called Morristown, or wherever you would imagine 
Scottish suicides would wind up. So there's a lot of post-death drinking, which is kind of funny. Um, the main character, or sort of one of the main characters, is a guy who was trying to commit suicide, but was talked into not committing suicide by a denizen of Morristown who's been there for a couple of hundred, hundred years, who wants to employ him to do some office work in this sort of limbo for, uh, for suicides. And a, a lot of the humor in the book is generated by the fact that there's a lot of, um, I don't want to give away too, too many spoilers, but there's a lot of bureaucratic horseshit involved in um, dealing with people who aren't dead yet in Morristown. There are two people who aren't dead yet. There is an orphaned girl um, named Gail who's very beautiful. And of course, she's the only good looking person in Morristown. <laughs> Except for the guy who's been dead for, I think, 300 years. His name is Buchan and he's very charming and dashing. And I suppose he's the romantic hero of the story. Although uh, his heroine is on a different of a, a different one of these um, Scottish dead people islands. Um, it, it was one of those star-crossed loves that occurred before you were allowed to commit adultery in polite society. So they both killed themselves and wound up on separate islands, trying to get their shit straightened out in the afterlife so that they can go on to whatever the uh, next attraction in the afterlife is. And it's got to be more attractive than a rocky island off the off the coast of Scotland where all there is to do is pretty much drink and look at the other suicides. Um, so he doesn't seem to be that annoyed about it, but I'm annoyed on his behalf. Um, I don't think it costs very much either, so I would give it a go if I were you. It's an interesting little meditation on... Um, self-pity and karma and uh very charming and funny